What is a good retirement? Well, I gotta hate to tell you this, 40% replacement ratio is probably not going to be a great retirement. Why is it not good enough? Well, for that, I'm going to back to a picture here. What is a good retirement? That's what we're trying to do with pensions. I think a good retirement would be that when you get to retirement, if you can continue to have the standard of living for which you have become accustomed by the time you reach retirement, you know, you're going to have life when you were a student, maybe here, and you like to hope. But eventually, you're going to be out there. You're going to get used to how you're living. Now, you may be living at this level or this level or ideally that level, but you've gotten used to it. And one thing I'm pretty sure about is that while you would like to have a better, oh, we all like to have more, even if it's to give it away, you're not going to like the idea of cutting your standard living. You've gotten used to how you're living. So, we would say a good retirement is one where you can sustain the standard of living of the latter part of your work life, not your average work life, averaging when you were a student to when you were finally working, because that's not how you're living. You want to be able to continue to live in a style you do. That's a goal. We don't always get there. But it's important to see this, because if you agree with this, this drives the design of what you need. Let me give an example of a, what a selfie would be. If you were a 25-year-old, some millennials here? I think so. OK. If you're a 25-year-old planning to retire at 65, that means you plan to retire in 2058. What would be the selfie bond you buy? They would sell a series. The series would be selfies 2038, 2048, 2037, different years off the shelf, all with a date on them. And you would say, OK, I'm planning to do 2058. So when you go to buy your selfie, you look for the 2058. So you do have to have a guess of when you're going to retire. Sorry. But that's all. Watch what happens. You go and buy it. So you say, I have a selfie. And the way it works is, if you buy the 2058 bond now, it pays you nothing, zero, no coupon, no payments, until 2058. And then each selfie bond at 2058 starts to pay you, let's say, $10 a year. I'm not going to put it in a wand, 10,000 won a year, but $10 a year. So you understand, one selfie pays you $10 a year every year for, say, 20 years, expected lifetime. So, if you buy a selfie, you know what you're going to get. So I could ask you, what's your goal in retirement? Well, you may not know, but there are professionals that can say, in order to get you to sustain your standard of living, you would need a certain amount of replacement of income. And they come up with a number. So let's say the number you would like to have, that you would have a great, you know, a really good retirement, is 50000 a year just for a number. How many selfie bonds is in your goal? Well, if each one's going to pay you 10, 5,000 bonds. That wasn't hard, was it? I want you to think about this like you were going out to buy it. So someone helps you, maybe gives you an estimate that for who you are, a good retirement would be, at least in today's standards, 50,000 a year. So you say, how many selfie bonds do I need? I need 5,000. So you know your goal, you know how many bonds you need, right? Then you say you're going buying selfie bonds along for the next five years, 10 years, and you say, how am I doing? How close am I to my retirement need goal? Do you have to call in an advisor? No. Let's say you've got 3,000 bonds. You're down the road. What are 3,000 bonds going to pay you? $10 each. So you've got 30,000 for your so you're 60% of the way there. What I want you to see from this, by taking you through this, is you can figure out how many bonds you need for your goal, and then you can monitor for yourself how you're doing. If you have almost 50,000 bonds, you're almost done. If you have very few bonds, you know you need more. You don't have to do any interest calculations. You don't have to do compound interest and convert it to annuities, all this stuff it is a horror show to do, even for professionals. You just look at it and so it. So do you see, with selfish, you know how many you need, and you know where you are at any time. 
And you'll notice I give you no other information. I don't tell you interest rates or anything else. OK, so that's an example of a selfie. OK, so that's the first group. Who else is going to do it? Well, as you heard in the introduction, and it's on my screen, isn't it about 40% the replacement maximum? Maximum, 40%. Well, I hate to tell you this, 40% replacement ratio is probably not going to be a great retirement. Sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody, but that's not the world. And so many people are going to discover or figure out that if they want to have a decent retirement, in addition to their public pension, they may want to have to save more. They'll buy self, they could buy selfies as an efficient way. Um, some of you, in public, particularly in private plans, and who knows what the world's going to be like over the next 20, 30 years in terms of how retirement conditions are, those of you who are in defined contribution plans, which are like the public plans, you have your own account, you make decisions what to invest in, now you've got to make decisions, don't you? Even though it's in a plan. Well, decision could be just to buy selfies. So you see, that group would also be one. Now who else, this is, I've talked about the individual, but who else would use this? NPS, the private pensions, why? What are they doing? They're taking your contributions, they are promising to pay you something in the future or they're giving you the returns. But think of the NPS, you, you, have a, you have a benefit. A selfie bought by the institutions will allow them to hedge, if they want to, their liability to pay you in the future your li what they promise you. So not only will individuals want to buy these bonds, but so will the institutional investor. That's the thing, okay?